Okay, we're going to run a little bit of an experiment here. Uh, it is 35 degrees Celsius out, or for you Americans out there, about 95 degrees Fahrenheit. I just got home. The engine is nice and hot. Let me turn it off and I'm going to quickly jump out here and see if we can hear something in our gas tank. Do you hear that? Right, and I bet you, to pop my gas cap off, we're going to hear a pretty angry hiss if I can get the key in. Well, that was a successful demonstration and experiment. What I wanted to show you there is that that is the starting effects of vapor lock. And so we come back to the engine once again. And I mentioned this before when I was trying to explain what all these hoses do, but I wanted to really bring it home exactly how the vapor lock system works and again, what vapor lock does. If you don't know, so fuel has a boiling point. What a surprise. That boiling point is achievable definitely underneath the hood of a car. And in a situation like this where you have a reverse flow engine, that is your exhaust manifold, is directly above your intake manifold and both are on the same side of the engine, that means all that heat's going to come up and it's going to get all of your fuel system nice and hot to the point where it's going to start boiling and producing a fuel vapor inside the lines. The same could happen for the carburetor. Even though at the bottom here there is a plastic spacer which is used to insulate the carburetor to a degree, like even this is hot to the touch just because it's under the engine, under the hood here in the engine bay. And everything is going to boil gas. And in a vehicle which has no way to control vapor lock, it means that you're going to have vapor forming in all of this here and it's going to displace the gas in the line. Uh, on some fuel pumps, it'll actually force the gas backwards and force it all the way back to the tank. Um, what it can also do is that it can force gas forwards into the carburetor and then it's going to continue to boil in the carburetor because again you're on top of the manifold in a hot engine bay and it's going to first off force gas out of the jets and all of the circuits inside of the carburetor and it's also going to try and find pretty much any space in here that it can to expand that vapor and displace all of that gas. The result is, is when you go to start the car, because we have a mechanical fuel pump, and it, as a result it doesn't pressurize itself like a fuel injected vehicle does, you have to crank and crank and crank and crank and crank, because now you have to pull fuel back from the tank through the fuel pump. Hopefully it's just stopped at the fuel pump. So over these lines here, through the fuel filter, you have to fill the bowl of the carburetor, then you have to purge the main idle jets and the circuits inside of the carburetor, and if you've had gas being ejected into the manifold, you may even be flooded. Yes, you can have a lean mixture which is preventing carburation and too much gas in the manifold so you're completely flooded out. That is vapor lock. It just happens after, oh, a couple of minutes, 10, 15 minutes of sitting with a hot engine here because once you stop it, your engine will hot soak. And that's when it happens. The vapor control system doesn't require any electronics in its basic form. This is a slightly more advanced system, but it all comes down to this fuel filter right here. We have one line going in. We have two lines going out. The bottom line here, goes straight into our carburetor. The top line, however, when the bowl in the carburetor is satisfied and the needle valve closes, we don't need to pump more gas into it. So instead, this top line just goes over here and then a steel line under the car returns gas back to the tank. But this is at the top point, and if we disregard this being the highest point of the vehicle, this is more important. This is the highest point of our entire fuel supply system and carburation system. Yes, it doesn't. It seems like it's lower than the carburetor, but remember the bowl is right down here, and this is pretty much at the same spot. So, when you turn your car off and it hot soaks, all this begins to boil. And the vapor from here and here will automatically collect 
inside of your fuel filter. The top line also serves as an escape route for all of that vapor. So instead of forcing it into the carburetor, it sends it back down the fuel return line and that dribbling we heard, that was the, the vapor that was now under a rather impressive amount of pressure, forcing gas back into the tank using that line. And in case you're wondering to yourself, well, what happens once the fuel tank pressurizes and you have vapor trying to push itself back? Won't it just come back up the fuel return line into the fuel filter and cause our vapor lock issues again? Well, yes, except for one thing. And while this is a nice squishy fuel hose, down near the end here where it converts to a steel line, you'll find there's a solid spot. There is a spring-loaded check valve in the hose itself. That check valve prevents fuel and gases, like vapor, to be pushed back up the line and into the fuel filter. Of course, that means the carburetor is still, however, getting hot, so it's going to be boiling gas in there. These types of carburetors, it's difficult to say it's a sealed carburetor, but this is not an open air vented carburetor. And I'm saying that even though you can clearly see in the top here, there are bull vents sticking out of the top. And that's because the air cleaner is part of this section of the carburetor as well. It's all part of the vapor control system. The vent can come up here. Vapor can collect inside the air cleaner. Heck, it can go down into the manifold all it wants, as long as it's going around the circuits and keeping vapor out of them. But it can't go down the snorkel and otherwise escape to the atmosphere because of this little door here. When the engine's running, doors open and you can have air pull in. But once the engine stops, no vacuum, it slams itself shut. So all of your fuel vapor is still trapped inside of here and it's not possible for any of it to escape to the atmosphere. We have these two lines right here and these are vents for your bowl. So as all that's boiling, instead of pressurizing the carburetor and forcing the gas out, the vapor is getting into these lines. These lines go into this buddy right here, which is your emissions charcoal canister. This is activated charcoal, and it collects these hydrocarbons and evaporated and vaporized fuel, and once you start the car and you get a bit of a ported vacuum on this here, it opens a valve, and it basically pulls it back into the carburetor using the PCV line. It's a smog control system, and also just it helps to deal with the fact that you're going to be evaporating a ton of gas. There's multiple lines here. There's also a line here that goes down another line which goes to your gas tank, and that's just your gas tank vent. This is what's known as a pressurized fuel system. Even the tank is not vented to the atmosphere, um, and you know when a gas tank is vented to the atmosphere because in the summer you get the smell of gas whenever you get around the back of the car. This one here can actually do that if you have a bad gas cap, which is what many modern uh, fuel vapor control system um, OBD2 errors are. I'm just trying to remember that one off the top of my head. I don't remember the particular error code. This is all that and it simplifies it even though there's a bunch of extra lines for it. But like I said, this is slightly more advanced. Really all you need is this to prevent vapor lock and to collect that unburnt uh, vaporous fuel. Because we have a computer here, we also have this little buddy right here. And the idea is that when you start your car and it detects that the engine's hot, and it knows it's hot because it has a temperature sensor in the air cleaner and a temperature sensor hiding just right there behind that red uh, metal clip. So what it'll do is it'll actually nudge the idle a little higher than usual. And that there is just simply to ensure that the engine has slightly higher RPMs, it's pumping more gas, and it's purging all the vapor out of the system. It can go to the tank and do whatever the hell it wants, or it can just collect in the rest of it and get pulled into here because now you'll have a vacuum on this line here and it'll purge out the charcoal canister. And it'll continue to do that while you're driving. And that's how it works. That's how you can fight um, vapor lock in a carbureted engine. Now let's actually see, during the majority of this video here, the vehicle has been hot soaking. Let's go see if it starts. And so now, after about, oh, 10 minutes of letting the engine hot soak and vapor lock establish itself, we shouldn't be able to start the car immediately. It should just require a crank, 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 and then maybe it'll start if we hold the throttle a bit. That's classic vapor lock.
but because we have the vapor lock control systems, which try to reduce it as much as possible, I don't even need to have my foot on the gas pedal right now. It's currently holding it for me a little tiny bit, and because we had that system that was just dumping all of that vapor back into the tank, the fuel lines were very quick to refill. The bowl for whatever gas had boiled away was immediately re-added, uh, re and carburation could, uh, could quickly take over, and the engine started.